Hi, I'm Charlie Brown and I'm a wildlife biologist with the Rhode Island Division of Fish and Wildlife. Part of my responsibilities with the Division of Fish and Wildlife are studying bats and fur bearers. Fur bearers are those animals which are traditionally hunted or trapped for their fur. Species of bats, Rhode Island bats, uh, that are native to Rhode Island in this box. We have a little brown bat, a red bat, and this is a male and a female. The hoary bat, which is the largest bat in our area. We have the big brown bat, which is our most common species, and the one you're most likely to see in your backyard, or in the silver-haired bat. So we use a number of different methods to study bats. As you probably know, bats are nocturnal. Uh, they're difficult to see and count. Um, but we do a number of different things to kind of get a sense of what uh, bat species we have in Rhode Island and uh, what their numbers are doing. Uh, one of those things that we do are we do acoustic surveys where we put out special equipment um, that can record bat calls, which we can then use to identify the species of bat. Um, and we also do maternity roost surveys. Maternity roosts are uh, congregations of female bats that get together in the spring and summertime to have their babies. And we count them when they leave the roost at night to feed go to Gabby who's at a maternity roost in Richmond and she's going to tell you a little bit more about how we count bats at maternity roosts. Thanks Charlie. Hi everyone, I'm here at a bat maternity roost doing an exit count. So every year the Division of Fish and Wildlife with the help of volunteers counts bats as they leave the roost. So right behind me you can see we have a big old building. This is where female bats like to gather together in what's called a maternity roost. And at dusk they all leave to go forage for insects and as they exit we count them. We do two counts every year. Once in the spring when the females arrive before they have their pups and once in the end of the summer, once the pups begin to fly. It's very relaxing. You just stare at the house and click your clicker as the bats come out. But sometimes the bats come out very quickly and that's why we have the clickers. So if you need to, you can click really fast. We always make sure to record things like the date, time, weather, and location on our data sheets. It's important that we monitor bats this way to see how the population is doing. We can tell if there are too many bats, not enough bats, or if the population is really healthy. The count that we're doing tonight is for big brown bats. The only other species of bats that will roost in maternity colonies is little brown bats. And, oh, I think I just saw one. I better pay attention. Back to you, Charlie. Another way to study bats is to actually capture and handle bats. Uh, and to do that, we set up mist nets, which are very fine threaded nets that we set up across roads or in forest trails uh, where we suspect bats will be feeding or flying, and uh, we capture them. So, in some cases, we actually band bats, which means we put a, a, an aluminum wristband on. It doesn't hurt the bats, and each band has a unique uh, identification number on there. So if that bat is ever captured again, we can learn a little bit of information about possibly how far bats travel, how long they live, and other important information. We have had bats that we banded in Rhode Island recaptured in Vermont. Bats have a couple of strategies to survive the winter. One is to hibernate, another is to migrate. Bats that hibernate typically go to caves and mines or other structures that have cave-like environments, which would be cold, uh, damp places that don't go below freezing but get pretty close to it. Now we don't have any caves or mines in Rhode Island, but we do have some man-made structures that have cave-like environments. And we do have a few bats that hibernate here. But for the most part, our bats go to other states to hibernate. Um, some bats migrate to the south. Red bats, a common species we have here in the summertime in Rhode Island, go to the southeastern United States where they may or may not hibernate, maybe active all winter. One of the reasons we started to monitor bats here in Rhode Island is because bats are facing many threats today. White nose syndrome is a fungal disease that has, uh, in the last 10 years, has really decimated bat populations across the eastern United States. 
So another emerging issue for bats is wind turbines and wind energy development. Um, bats are susceptible to striking or being struck by wind tur turbines. Um, it's not well understood why they're attracted to turbines, but certainly many bats are killed by wind turbines in the United States every year. Another threat facing bats is loss of habitat, and particularly forests. So bats require forests for foraging, for roosting, for having their babies. And anytime we lose trees, we lose bat habitat. Bats are important consumers of insects, and they are also important pollinators and seed dispersers. I love my job because I work with so many wonderful people, like Gabby and Mary, and all the other folks here at our office. I also like that it's different every day. No two days are the same. And I learn something new all the time.